video, I like to show you how to install web applications uh, on our Windows 2016 server. As you can see, this is a core edition. That means we don't have uh, a desktop. We just have the PowerShell just open and running. The scenario was to install a, web a standard web portal and a password reset portal. To do so and to enable the full text search feature in these portals, I was just installing an application server before. If you are interested in that, then please look at the previous video. To let you know what we have installed, I just uh, show you all my running containers. And as you can see at present on my machine, there is just one container running, which is the one identity manager application server we have installed in the previous video. Now I like to install first the standard web portal. To do so, I will use a command that is already prepared. You can see that here. To install the web portal, we are using Docker Run again. We are using a port mapping and mapping from the Docker container port 80, which is a standard HTTP port for the web portal. And we will map that to 8080. The reason is that port 80 was used before uh, here on that machine just for our application server. And to connect to the right portal, we will then use 8080 to connect to our standard web portal. So the secrets are stored in a folder. This is like before, it's just here a folder on our machine. You see the, uh, the base URL that is, uh, that is as well part of the installation. You see as well the cache directory and the logs directory for that specific web portal. And last but not least, you see the name of the image. Knowing all of that, I just copy now the command and just can enter the complete command. And once it is there, I can hit the enter button and my next container get installed. Now it's done. And to ensure that this container is just working, I need port 8080. I need my web browser. Here we are, a new page. We just take we just take the URL from our application server, which contains nearly everything. The only thing I need is now port 8080. Of course, that is the port for my standard web portal. And now let's just figure out if we are able to see the standard web portal. And here we are. This is our standard web portal. I will sign in with Marcus. We W, this is the one here. That is my account in the database with the password. And as you easily can see, here is my standard web portal. It is now container based. Uh, to let you know that as well, the full text search works. I just, for example, use here the full text search to search for Marcus. And here he is. That shows you that as well, the full text search, it's up and running. And if we look again in our Docker installation, then we will easily see that if we run a Docker PS, that we have now two containers up and running. One container is our web server and one container is our application server. And with that, I've installed a web service. That means a standard web portal. I was able to do full text search because an application server container is installed. That, have we, that means we have two containers. Both are talking with each other using the directories we uh, exposed before. And as you easily can see, that was absolutely not something very complex. The only difficulty I like to say is just to put together these commands I prepared in my text file. Last but not least, uh, I like to show you now how to install the last container, which is my password reset portal. And to do so, I will use the next command uh, in my specific preparation file. Here we are. The third container will then be a container where the port gets mapped on 8088. Yeah, that means there will then be my password reset portal available. Same thing than before. There's a secrets folder where I can find the secrets. There is the base URL I will use for that specific portal. I have to identify a specific web project this time. Please remember the standard web portal, it's one web project. Uh, there is another web project, which is the QER password web. That is then the password web project I have to install. Yeah, standardly, it will use the standard web portal, but if I have to use another project, I have to specify that, like I do that here with that parameter. A cache file is exposed as well, uh, the, and uh, there's a logs 
file as well exposed. And last but not least, I have to configure here the name of the image, which is then here the same image than before for the standard web portal. You can see that here. Yeah, because it is the same container, but the only thing which is different, it's now the web project. Yeah, that's the reason why I can use the same container as a copy again, but this time with another web project. Pretty nice and available with Docker. So to run that, I just copy the complete thing. Go back into my command line here. I copy the whole stuff into that. Here we are. Container is now up and running. So if I now step back to my browser and take the next tab, then the only thing I need here is the URL this time with port 8088. And voila, as you easily can see, this is our password reset web portal. I can now use, I don't want to reset passwords, especially because I get uh, angry colleagues if the passwords are looking different than before. What you can see here on that specific server is now that Docker PS shows me now three running containers, the web portal and the web portal again. One of them is just uh, hosting our specific password reset portal. The other one, it's the web project with the standard web portal and the application server all of them are working pretty well together. And as you can see, the whole thing was not taking 15 minutes. And be honest, that was only 15 minutes because I was talking a lot. At the end, if you are a Docker expert and you use these containers and you are a little bit prepared, that means you have your secrets and your commands already prepared, then in seconds, you can spin up these containers.